And how many of these nuclear catastrophes are we going to put up with? And why the American people and the Japanese people do not know what's going on, it's all about weapons production. Illegal, uh, if it ever really comes out and the either government really admits to it, at the end of the, uh, the, end, the non-proliferation treaty, at the end of the U.S.-Japan security treaty, basically nullifies all those treaties. Uh, and uh, basically it'll, it'll make shambles of America's effort to rein in Iran, North Korea nuclear programs also. And there is a massive double standard here. When we have a massive site this large, this extensive, operated this long, with American technicians and engineers over there, American support over there, it's going to be very, very tough for the United States to point the pointing fingers at uh, Iran or North Korea, which have much smaller programs. We have, uh, unfortunately, uh, a mm -hmm. curve that is going the wrong way. The accumulation of radioactive isotopes, again, in the ground and the water and the fish and the animals, is not stopping. It's only increasing, and it's going to continue that way. There's just no reversing it. We even have now yes. found increased levels. Now, these are small. They're not dangerous, but they're increased levels in pine needles all up and down the West Coast. Certainly in crops, That's they right. found increased levels in prunes recently. The food supply here has been clearly impacted. Is it dangerous to eat? Not yet, but uh, things are only going to continue to compound and get worse. It is said within the next three to four years, the waters off the coast here are going to be heavily contaminated with the cesium twins and other heavy isotopes. So it's, it's not a good situation, and we're just not getting anything at all from the government here. Nothing. No reading, no, no program. Well, the no real, real threat in the upper atmosphere, we talked about these strange uh, weather that's happened in the United States this year. Uh, now a massive drought, it's, as I told you, as I flew over, massive amount of contamination in the upper atmosphere, changing weather patterns. We may see a lot of the United States, turn, North America, turn into a desert. We may see the depopulation of Scandinavia, where there's basically no more water left. This is, this is causing massively, you know, massive things going on. It will only have happened, these levels will only have had if it, uh, weapons grade uranium were involved. The bomb has backfired, and I think on the anniversary, of Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing, the chickens are coming home to roost in the United States of America. So far to date, Japan has dropped 168 at least Hiroshima-grade bombs on itself with this disaster. Yeah, and it's all drifting across the Pacific in both directions. This, these are nuclear reactors in the United States, and then the red areas, the darker the red area, the higher the probability of it being a seismic zone, an area where there could be earthquakes. Um, how many of these reactors are the same kind of reactors that, that went down, Paul, in Fukushima? And, and how, how old and vulnerable are our reactors? And how many of them are in these earthquake well, areas? Well, there are now 23 Mark I boiling water reactors in the United States that are operating. And, and uh, primarily, they're um, uh, east of the Mississippi, although Cooper Station right here uh, is a um, is a is a Mark One, but throughout Illinois and um, in uh, uh, you know New England and the Mid Atlantic region, we have these Mark Ones that <clears throat> are essentially uh, antiquated and uh, dangerous because of the. Um, the designs have been known to be vulnerable since uh, 1972, declared by the Atomic Energy Commission, uh, affirmed again by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in 1986 as vulnerable to failure. And so any number of events, uh, an earthquake which could lead to a fire or, a, uh, or just a fire initiating uh, from worker error, like a candle which started the Browns Ferry Fire mm -hmm. in 1975, and actually Fukushima almost had another name. And it could have very well have been Browns Ferry uh, after a, a fire there uh, cut out all of the cooling systems to the Browns Ferry units and uh, we narrowly escaped a, um, uh, a core melt accident at a vulnerable reactor system like these Mark 1s. And, and last fall, wasn't it Fort Calhoun that we had uh, a flood, floodwaters came within a few inches of, yes. of shutting down the... Well, we're, uh, right now we're, um, we're following the Fort Calhoun facility. It's a, it's a pressurized water reactor, so it's not a Fukushima design. But, you know, the vulnerability 
uh, of that's in, this inherent danger in, in all nuclear power plants uh, could play out in any number of disasters. Uh, this plant, for example, there are miles and miles of electrical cable that are underground in vaults that were that have, were submerged for months for uh, during the uh, the flood, and these electrical cables are safety related, and they were never qualified to be wet or uh, submerged for any uh, any time. So uh, this uh, the Fort Calhoun plant remains shut down now, but clearly uh, we don't know. Uh, we, you know, we doubt that it's safe because they never qualified the electrical cable that stretches out under these plants. We have a graphic of, of when basically these things fail, this, this, uh, the bathtub curve for nuclear accidents. Kevin, Three Mile Island and Chernobyl were early on in the lifespan, the break-in phase, it says here, of the reactors, and then the break-down phase, we're seeing Indian Point and Davis Best. Explain what this means. Sure, yeah, thanks to Dave Lockbaum at Union of Concerned Scientists for this graph he put together. It shows that there's elevated risk of reactor accidents at brand new reactors like TMI and Chernobyl, which were a year old or less. And the reason for that is uh, bugs in the system, flaws in the design, operator inexperience that gets worked out in a very bad way. That's what happened there. But then what's really significant in the United States now is the ever-growing number of breakdown phase reactors. So these incidents here, Indian Point, February 2000, the steam generator tube bursts in the steam generators. You lose enough steam generator tubes all at once, you have a loss of coolant accident in the core. Another pathway to loss of coolant accident is if you corrode through the reactor lid, which they almost did at Davis Bessey, Ohio, in February of 2002. These were the closest things to breakdown phase disasters we've wasn't, had. Wasn't there something very much like this that just happened? Was it San Onofre? San Onofre is uh, a big concern right now because of the um, degradation of steam generator tubes uh, where this, and, and there are different mechanisms of uh, de uh, degradation as well. Uh, so the um, uh, the San Onofre nuclear power station had only operated 10 months with these uh, steam generators uh, that are bad designs. Here it was more wear out, but clearly what we're also seeing is bad designs being put into, um, into, older, in, reactors. into, into older reactors, exactly. Wow, wow. It's, it's remarkable. The, the United States, um, what, what kind, uh, you know, are we exaggerating the risk? I mean, is this... The I mean, it's, you know, I, I, let me ask you, or, you know, anybody, you know, are you willing to play Russian roulette uh, regardless of how many cylinders are on the gun? I mean, right. if, if you load them up um, and, you, and you spin the, the cylinder and pull the trigger, you know, we're, we're basically involved in this game of Russian roulette now where, the pro where we're, we're gambling probabilities against vulnerabilities. And um, we know the vulnerabilities are increasing as these plants age and as margins of safety wear thinner and thinner and thinner. And now we're also introducing the fact that we have a regulator uh, where the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, clearly stands more and more for no regulatory control. And as we lose control, as we see plants age and deteriorate, we're on these converging courses for a catastrophe. And then that's our concern right now, that, that this is an inherently dangerous industry that's losing oversight and getting um, older and deteriorating um, in, with new acronyms that you know, we haven't even talked about. And, and that, frankly, wouldn't even exist if we the people through uh, Price Anderson didn't insure it. It's, it the, the, the private market will have nothing to do with it. Paul Japan's power companies are turning to thermal power to compensate for their offline nuclear plants. But the switch back to fossil fuels is driving up carbon dioxide emissions. Nine Japanese power companies say their generators released a combined 430 million tons of CO2 in the 12 months ending in June. That's up 17 percent from a year earlier. Only two of Japan's 50 functional nuclear reactors are currently online. The government and power companies are facing strong public opposition to any restarts. But the emissions are making it difficult for power firms to meet their CO2 reduction targets. They have set a deadline of next March to cut emissions by 20% from 1990 levels. 
The support rate for Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda and his cabinet stood at 28%, up one point from last month. The disapproval rate stayed at 56%. Japan's man in charge of economic policy says the nation will likely remain on a gradual path to recovery. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. 